I just like Discovery. I'm a big fan of Strange New Worlds. I know you're filming season three. How's that going? It's going great. It's going great. Anything you want to tease? No. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, so I am also a fan of Lower Decks. I think that Mike does such a great job with that. Um, how is, do you know if they're if Paramount's planning on renewing that? Do you know if it's near its end of its run? What can you say? Um, you know, I, I don't. I, what I can tell you is that I think we've had five amazing seasons. And if it's five amazing seasons, then that's that's amazing. You know, I agree. The fact is that um, five seasons of anything in, a, in the streaming universe is, is almost unheard of at this point. Um, it's been such a delightful show. Um, Mike, the whole staff, everybody on it, amazing. Tawny Newsom, you know, obviously who plays Mariner on the show, is also in our Starfleet writers' room. And um, so it feels like the spirit of that show has somehow also migrated into Starfleet in some way. Um, but no, I, you know, if, that, if this turns out to be our last season, I think we will all walk out heads high. Speaking of Starfleet Academy, not, not like I wasn't going to ask about it, where, when, what is the plan for when, you, when do you hope to start filming? Have you started casting? We haven't started casting the kids. Right. So, <laughs> got it. Uh, do, have you revealed when it takes place on the Star Trek timeline? Not to you, no. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, Actually, to everyone but you. Right, exactly. <laughs> 100%. So, is it going to be another 10 episode show? Yeah. Uh, you start filming in August. Is it like a six month shoot, nine month shoot? Yeah, it'll be a six month shoot. But you know, you got to remember that it's it, it could end up not airing till twenty six. Is the truth? Well, that, like at this point, we don't know. But yeah. by starting th that late in the year, and you, you got to figure. I mean, just building the sets alone is a massive endeavor. Then six months of shooting, and then six to eight months of post. And you know what I was very. It, it, if you recall, it there was all this noise around season one and season two of Discovery because the streaming service had never really, yep. they were not used to the kind of, they were like, oh, it's a turnaround on a cop show. And we're like, no, you don't understand. It's eight months of visual effects turnaround and we're not going to rush that. So we, it'll come out, but it'll come out when it's done. What can you tease in terms of, I know you haven't cast the kids, mm -hmm. uh, how many kid characters or how many, what can you tease about the cast of like the protagonists on the show? This is my first official Star, Starfleet Academy question. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of different kids from a lot of different places. Um, and some of them want to be there. Some of them don't want to be there. Um, it's going to be, I think, a fundamental reinforcement of all the things that we love about Starfleet in general. Um, but it'd be, it's very interesting because, you know, you always want to ask yourself, uh, why, why this show now? You know, and I think that one of the big things that um, certainly my 17 year old son is, is facing, which is a, a kind of a fundamental Star Trek question is how did we get here? How has this generation inherited the mistakes from previous generations and what are we going to do to fix it, to build that optimistic future that is Roddenberry's essential vision. And that is very much going to be at the heart of Starfleet Academy. One of the reasons why I'm excited for the show is because Star Trek cannot exist with just aiming at the older fans. Mm -hmm. You have to bring in new people, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why Prodigy is great. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I'm looking forward to Academy because you can go after maybe 15 to 19 year olds. So is that, do you know what I mean? Like, is that- I do. And so here's the thing. I couldn't agree with you more, but I will also say, and I'm very, I'm always very vocal about this with the studio. You can't do that to the exclusion of OG fans. Sure. You, you actually, Agreed. you have to make sure that you are also pleasing people who've been around and who are diehard TOS fans and, you know, diehard next gen fans and whatever, whatever iteration of Trek is yours, you cannot alienate those people. You actually also have to invite them to the tent. So the challenge is how do you do that while also bringing in Trek to a new generation of fans that has no experience with those shows, has never watched those shows, right? So you need to make a show that you can drop into if you don't know anything about Star Trek, but also a show that you get a tremendous amount out of if you have all that canonical history. My, my last thing for you, because I know you have to go and I have the cast coming in. Um, one of the things about the Academy is that, you know, you only go to the Star Trek Academy for so many years. Mm -hmm. So is it one of these things where hypothetically you get a three or four season, you get to run for four seasons. Do you see it that each season you would essentially be bringing in new people and people would be graduating or are you aiming for the for whatever amount of year, you see what I mean? I, of course I see what you mean. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we talk about it every day. Um, uh, without spoiling anything, what I will tell you is that I think the structure and the construction of the show is going to allow for both of those things to happen.